Welcome to my channel. Please subscribe my channel for more informative videos. Dear friends, today we are going to show you top 10 good English speaking leaders of Nepal. We have ranked the leaders based on their delivery, clarity, context, word power, and confidence. If you have other opinion than ours please put your view in the comment box below. And, don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to keep updated. No, no, we are not against India. Who told you this side? We have, yes, we have, we have two big uh, neighbor, India and China. We have, we have very good relation with, with India, closeness with India, historically, culturally, language-wise, and uh, religiously. Man Sarovar, we go to Tibet. Everybody, in Nepal, even Indian go to for Vedic Man Sarovar. Nepali go to Bhardwar sometimes for, for Bhararas, Tirupati. They are the religiously also we are close, you know. Therefore, we have very good relation with India, we have good relation with China. They have two big neighbors, and we are support both you are supporting Nepal, they are also supporting Nepal. Therefore, we are not I would like to tell you, we will not go against India, we, will not, we can go against China as well, you know. The Dhanusha Dham, needs Nepal more attention of the state to make it as a tourist destination. Though some of the new works have been done there, but it is not enough. Because the bows, the broken bow, the remnants is still there. And anyone who will go there, he will have his perception, will enlighten the old age incident that took place in Janakpur, the weddings of Rama and Sita. We have always in consistent position that Lipolek, Kalapani and Olympia Dura belongs to Nepal. We have no any geographical or geopolitical uh, ambition. We just want to remind uh, the historical facts. We just want to uh, India uh, respect that treaty and uh, let us have a formal uh, diplomatic dialogue to settle this problem. I was really very much concerned about these Chinese uh, questions, you know. It is quite clear that we want to make a uh, good neighboring relation with both India and China. There is no dispute and controversy in this issue. But because last year there was a serious incident in Tibet, and I think that Chinese leadership was naturally very much concerned about that incident and the relation between in Nepal and uh, that kinds of uh, activities in Tibet. Therefore, naturally they were more active about the changing political scenario here in Nepal. And time and again that delegation came. But unfortunately, Indian side think that we have invited them. It is they didn't come totally, at your invitation. totally baseless, you know. That kind of mm. suspicion or confusion is, I think it is very ridiculous, you know. It's a matter of pride for us that Nepal remain always uh, an independent country. Mm. Uh, when uh, the imperialistic era was uh, in such a situation where no sun was setting mm -hmm. of a colonial country. But uh, there was, uh, of course, in Asia, oil spot, mm. where uh, the razor shadow of uh, colonialism were never cast. There, there was mm. always freedom, always independence. Of course, uh, we had to sacrifice for that. Uh, we had to fight. Uh, our ancestors fought uh, with a knife, uh, they are just knives, mm. and against the cannons and guns. But uh, they resisted, and the country remained always sovereign. Mm. And uh, we had to, we lost the war, of course, and we had to lose some parts, territory mm. of the country. 
and uh, were compelled to rest in agreement, but uh, the sovereignty of the country was again uh, continued. It was. Mm -hmm. So it's a great pleasure and honor for me to be here with you and share my humble thoughts. At the very outset, let me quote Lenin. He once said, it is more pleasant and useful to go through the experience of revolution than to write about it. <laughs> so for me, I am also having the same feeling. Though I am not writing about it, I am talking about it. And there is one more dilemma I am facing. I have to speak among such distinguished academics and I have lost touch with academia for almost 20 years. I have been a revolutionary activist. I was underground for almost 10 years, more than 10 years. And now I have been overground only for the last five years. And ironically, I have become the prime minister of the country. First of all, I mean, the way you're saying me, it sounds like you're giving me a statement, giving me a message. That's, that's certainly not the, not the style how television interviews are done in Nepal. First of all, I mean, if you ask me where Nepal stands, what are the facts, how we think this should be resolved, and then I'll be able to answer that question. I very strongly t uh, would like to put this fact that this, the, the border issue is an outstanding issue. India is committed to resolve this through bilateral means, diplomatic means. This is not doing, and uh, what I should do and what I yeah. should not do, this is not what you should be saying. You Min should be Min asking Mr. Rijal. You may disagree with me. I mean, let, let me make it very clear that if we, are not, if we do not respect as people of two different nations, if we do not respect each other as individuals who have their views so the, and their the the, then we probably would not have a very nice conversation. But the, we have the, to be very the, clear on that. Yeah. Uh, the government, the prime minister, and we, there are issues that we, we, we differ. We are in the opposition, he is in the government, there might be issues, the way I mean, this is presented, there, there, there could be differences. But the thing is, on, on the border issue, we are together. On the border issue, we will we no, no, fully support can... the position Prime Minister okay. has taken. No. This is Nepal's internal problem, and we are competent enough to address those, those issues on our own. The present government has asked all the agitating political parties to come for dialogue. And we have already completed four rounds of dialogue with the agitating political parties. I believe that we will be able to resolve this crisis through consensus and within the framework of the Constitution. But under any pretext, disruption of supply lines, disruption of transit is not acceptable. For a landlocked country, Nepal, this has become a very serious issue. Because of the disruption of supply lines, especially fuels and essential commodities, almost all educational institutions are forced to be closed. Mr. President, more than 2,000 industries are closed. Tourism has badly affected. In the overall economy, it's very unfortunate, Mr. President, that for a country like Nepal, you can imagine, Mr. President, how much suffering we are passing through. At times when we were 
celebrating the festivals. People had no cooking gas. The vehicular movement all over the country is less than 10 percent. Is that justifiable? Can't Nepal has its own authority to promulgate constitution? Mr. President, I'm sorry if I become a bit emotional. But that is, I think, what we are suffering today. Uh, we, we were able to resume the health facilities pretty quickly. And the credit goes to 24-7 work of the health workers and also credit goes to WSO and other partners who are there at a very difficult time. But we learned a lot from our experiences. And the first thing we, we, we are going to do is we want to expand the Health Emergency Operations Center to all, as Nepal is going to be now divided into seven provinces. So we'd like to have one center at least in one region. And this center will be responsible for all the planning, policies, and coordination of all the things which we need to do in the time of emergency. We're also uh, putting in place the three-tier rapid response team, which we right now have only have at the center and not very functional. We want to make it very well resourced at the same time. Also, uh, they, will make, they will be made responsible to coordinate with the, the community centers as well. And also, uh, we, we, we are also thinking of uh, developing kind of hubs such so that the tertiary care centers at the time of emergency can provide all the, the required services. And at the same time, we, are, we also learned that the coordination between the different agencies, it's must in this, in this sort of difficulty as health ministry cannot only provide health facilities, though the, the facilities uh, as it is supposed to provide is under the control of health ministry, but the other logistics, transportation, all those things. So to have a better coordination between the other ministries and for that, uh, we are thinking that we need a kind of uh, at least a semi-formal structure which can take care of all these things. So these are the things which we are trying to integrate as uh, Nepal is uh, going to make a huge shift uh, in the next a couple of months uh, as we had already decided to go for seven provinces and around 700 new local units. Previously it was 75 districts, 14 zones, so all setups were uh, meant for that kind of a political and administrative structure. So as we are going, shifting to completely new structure, so we would like to use this as, an, this as an opportunity also to build on what we learned from the, the this last earthquake. Uh, you know, we have talked about accountability. We have made, you know, corrupt politicians accountable. We have helped restore democracies in different places. But let's see things in totality. In totality, the gap between the rich and poor is increasing. The sense of insecurity in the world is increasing. The sense of violence is increasing. Environmental degradation is increasing. 2% Two per Two percent of the richest people on Earth accumulate 40% of the wealth. And 1% of the wealth, just 1% of the wealth, is shared by the 50% poorest people in the world. Is that fair? When we, okay, if you come to Germany, it is a developed country, we might say that, you know, we can talk about political rights, we can say that what journalism is doing good. If we go to America, if you go to the UK, that's fine. But the world is re really big, and there are lots of people who are suffering and has journalism which has so much power and so much access, such a huge access to the public, done to rectify these fundamental problems in the world. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe my channel.